2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm going to read the first five verses for you this evening and get to the message tonight. Do we begin to commend ourselves, or need we as some other epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. That's a, a verse I quote often. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in, the table, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we ask that the Holy Spirit, who has written something in the tables of our hearts, Lord, made us new creatures in Christ, Lord, that he will be our guide, our helper, our teacher, that the words that you have inspired for the church so many years ago would inspire the church today. And we don't come to hear from an individual, Lord, but from the heart of our God. So we pray that uh, that would be so tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the first two chapters in 2 Corinthians have honestly been a record of Paul and his companions of their, their trials, uh, their ceaseless trials. There's been a comforting testimony. There have been changes in Paul's travel. And Paul's attention has been on himself and his, and, and his co-laborers up to this point. But in chapter 3, he turns his attention towards the church. Now, I didn't read the rest of the chapter in its entirety. There are another, um, I think there's 18 verses in this chapter. So there's another 13 verses here. But as you read on, you're going to find that in this chapter, what he deals with is making a clear distinction between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Old Testament, the New Testament. That was, the, the difference was new. Again, you remember we're talking about an infant church, the early church. And there, were a, um, there was a group, you will not find the word Judaizers in the Bible. Um, it, it is an extra biblical term, but it describes a group of people that they dealt with on a continual basis. And anywhere Paul went, the Judaizers followed. What it was, it was Jews from Jerusalem, from the, from the temple, that would follow Paul, and, and, and they would say that, you know what, it's, it's okay to trust in Jesus Christ, but in order to become a whole Christian, you've got, to become, you've got to become a Jew. You can't be a Christian without being a Jew. And I, I thank the Lord for the Jewish nation and the Jewish people. Our, our Savior was, was a Jew. Our, our Bible was written by Jewish men. And uh, he had a Jewish mother, and I, I'm thankful for God is not done with Israel. That one day he's, all Israel shall be saved and shall be restored. Uh, but I don't have to become a Jew to become a Christian. In fact, the Bible says that uh, there is no difference between the Jew, the, church, the Gentile, uh, that there is, neither, there is uh, neither, no difference between the Jew and the Greek, nor the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him, and that we are one in Christ. Uh, that, in, in the church of God. But the, there was this crowd, and, and they come and said, well, Paul told you about the New, the New Testament, the New Covenant, but let us tell you about the Old, and they were causing confusion and honestly corrupting the truth in, in the church. And so in this chapter, he's just going to teach them some things that they make the clear distinction between the two, and that it's out with the Old and in with the New, we might say. And that... The old covenant was one of bondage that left them in blindness, and the new covenant was based on life and love and liberty. And so uh, in this, this chapter is, is the covenant in Corinth. And in the first five verses, he deals with the, the Corinthian church, um, and, and then he deals with the, the children that were confused. He talks about the children of Israel and their confusion. And so tonight we're just going to look at what Paul begins to say to the church. And he begins with a question. It's a, it's a, he's really not asking a question as much as he's making a statement. Do we begin to commend ourselves or need we as some others, as other people would, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Now, in Paul's day, letters of, uh, letters of commendation or recommendation, we might say, were a common form of introduction, recommending, recommending somebody for employment or, or care based... Uh, maybe provision, or like uh, it was almost like a blank check in one sense, giving somebody a blank check that you had signed, uh, allowing for some kind of personal care, provision, or and, and it was based on the character of the letter that uh, of the person that wrote the letter so that you could be assured of the character of the one who was carrying the letter. 
And they, there was a common thing. It, honestly, common thing, really, up until maybe the last 100 years ago, it was not uncommon uh, if a man resigned his position of occupation, that his employer, if he left under favorable circumstances, he would let, write a letter of recommendation. There might be some people in here old enough to have even remembered such things, okay? But uh, they were used in the early church as well. In fact, I can, I can show you at least five different occasions where letters were sent by somebody um, within the church to, to someone else to recommend them. Uh, Paul, uh, we, we find a letter of recommendation. Paul commended Silas in Acts chapter 15, uh, verses 23 through 27. You'll find that, I believe, Aquila and Priscilla sent a letter of recommendation for Apollos. In Acts chapter 18, Paul wrote, uh, he said, I commend unto you uh, Phoebe, a faithful servant and, and sister, in Romans 16, 1, uh, to the church at Rome. Uh, Mark uh, had a letter of recommendation or commendation in Colossians chapter 4, Zenos the lawyer in Titus chapter 3. So it, it was, uh, and what probably happened in all likelihood is that these Jews show up at the church at Corinth and say, hey, we're here to teach you something. Well, who are you? Well, they would have come with letters from the Sanhedrin, from the ruling Jewish religious council in Jerusalem, from the temple. And they would have these letters from the temple of Jerusalem. And they would have said the famous things, hey, we're Christians too, when they really weren't. And recommending them as teachers and vouch, vouching for them as, and their doctrinal authority. And so again, Paul wasn't asking a question, he was making a point. He didn't need letters of commendation from anyone. Least of all, the church at Corinth. He had planted the church at Corinth, living teaching and preaching there for a year and a half. Paul's life had already been an open book before them during his time there. They, he, didn't, he, didn't have to, he didn't need anyone to, to write and vouchsafe for him and recommend him. They knew who he was and what he was. There wasn't a need for that. And the point Paul would make is say, well, they obviously knew this. Well, the point that Paul wanted to make was his proof of commendation was not in any letter that he would carry or even in what the church knew about him, it was the church itself. Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. They have been written on the hearts of Paul and his co-laborers, displayed for all the sea, uh, all the world to see. And Paul is saying, my letter, the proof is in the pudding. And you're the proof, not some letter. The church itself, the people. And verse 1, verse 2 is a wonderful verse about the importance of our testimony. Listen to me. A believer's testimony is one of the most precious treasures that you possess. Look, I, I mean, uh, next to your, you, the gift of eternal life and your, and your Bible, behind those two things, I can't think of something more precious that you possess than your personal testimony. And look, let me tell you something. Everybody's got one. Now look, there's a difference between your, your reputation and people gossiping. Because you know, anytime somebody says something about us that we don't like, they're a gossip. Well, when people gossip, it, the, gossip has a purpose. It's slander and destruction and defamation. But it, if you're a pinhead and you've got a bad testimony, that's, that's your problem, not theirs. If what they say about you is true, you have no one to be blamed but yourself. So sometimes it's not gossip, it, it, it's bad testimony. And only we can, and we're the only ones that can change that for ourselves. If you don't like what people are saying about it, look, I've had people that have gotten on the internet, on Facebook and, uh, and different forums. I've had, I've had former members write things about me and read what they had to say. And I'm going to tell you, 95% of what they said was true. And I'm like, if you just take out the one blatant lie that should be painfully obvious to anybody with good sense, I'd like to put that on our church website for advertising. I don't have a problem with it. Okay, so it's, we, you, we, have a, we have a testimony. And a Christian's, you know, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Do you know the tragedy of that verse? is that Solomon had great riches, but he died with a terrible testimony. How sad, how tragic that Solomon somewhere in, in the last years of his life recognized that he blew it. 
and even more tragic, the man that had the wisdom. He knew what he was supposed to do. And yet he had all the wealth. Wealthiest man in the history of the world today, to, the, to this date. Wisest man that ever lived, not named Jesus Christ, walking on this earth. And he had a terrible testimony. Paul said he would have given a king's ransom for or Saul, Solomon said that he would have given, it was better to have that testimony, a good name. You know what, by the way, parents and young people, mom and dad may not be able to leave you a million dollars. Nothing says they have to. But if they left you a good name, is that your dad? Was that your mother? Are you their son? I think it was Douglas MacArthur, General MacArthur, that said uh, that he was trying to live as, he was asked a question, I don't remember what the question was, but he said, I'm trying to live my life in such a way that when someone asks my son if I'm his father, that he'll lift up his head in pride and not hang his head in shame. And you know, a Christian's life, ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known word of all life. Man. Christian's life is the only Bible many people will ever read. You know, I, somebody used to say, I'd rather see a sermon than read one or hear one. What people see in our character, our conduct, carries far more weight than what we say. What we say about ourselves is, is, is confirmed by how we live. You know, that old saying, your walk talks, and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Annie Johnson Flynn, she's one of my favorite poets. Um, every now and then I'll use one of hers in, in the bulletin. And uh, she uh, wrote a poem, actually one that I found I haven't used yet, but you'll see it shortly in a few weeks, called The World's Bible. And this is what it says. It's based on this verse on 2 Corinthians 3, 2. She says, Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet to lead men in his way. He has no tongues but our tongues to tell men how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. We are the only Bible the careless world will read. We are the sinner's gospel. We are the scoffer's creed. We are the Lord's last message, given in deed and word. What if the type is crooked? What if the print is blurred? What if our hands are busy with work other than his? What if our feet are walking where sin's allurement is? What if our tongues are speaking of things his lips would spurn? How can we hope to help him and hasten his return? Well, it was something to think about. By the way, there's a difference between what we think about ourselves and what others see and think about us. You know, those letters that were written, they could be faked. Oftentimes, the, you know, anybody could write a letter and put a signature to it. You could write your own letter. People did that in Paul's day. You know what? They, they weren't, there are always people who are not who they say they are or who you want you to think they are. You know, in law enforcement, they, they say that everyone has, this is what police officers will tell you, that, the, uh, that every person has three lives. The life you see, the life they want you to see, and the life they hope you don't see. And they spend a lot of, law enforcement spends a lot of time dealing with the life that people don't want to see. Now, notice what Paul says in verse 3. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. Our lives are a manifest. You've heard me mention before in the past, that, uh, think of a shipping manifest, whether it be by, by train or, or by a cargo ship uh, going overseas or by an airplane. Um, even, uh, usually even a FedEx or a UPS will have a manifest. Now these days they're probably all digital, but it used to be a written copy and it's like, this is what's in this ship. This is what's on this plane. This is what's on this train. It, it reveals the contents of the, what's, what's really inside. And Paul says that ye are manifestly, what is inside of you declares the letter, the epistle of Christ ministered by us. We came to serve you, to, to bring you the gospel where the Spirit of God 
washed you, regenerated you, renewed you, indwells you, and not, not written with ink. It wasn't written uh, uh, with ink and quill. It wasn't written on the parchment of Perg Pergamos or the, the papyrus of Egypt. But the Holy Spirit of God wrote on their hearts. What, what did Solomon say earlier in the book of Proverbs? My son, forget not my... Uh, uh, my son, give me thy heart... Uh, Oh, man, I'm, I'm drawing blank. He said, my son, give me thine ear and let, not, and let thy heart keep my commandments. And in one place in Proverbs, he said, write them upon the table of thine heart. Speaking about the commands that, that he gave to his son. And in, in Proverbs chapter 23, verses 6 through 8, Solomon admonishes his son uh, and, and all men not to eat the bread of the man that has an evil eye. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. He said, Eat and drink, saith he, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten, thou shalt vomit up and lose thy sweet words. He said, You're going to sit down with somebody that has an evil eye, and you're going to find out what's really in their heart, and they're going to make you sick. And what you, someone that you thought was sweet really was a sickening individual. You know, whatever is in your heart, that's what you truly are. It's that old saying that your, your reputation is what men perceive you to be, but your character is what God knows you to be. And if, if we are the epistle of Christ, then th this is the whole point of what Paul is saying here. If we're truly the epistle of Christ, that means that when people look at us, it's just like when you and I read our Bible. And the question is this. When they... When they look at us, what does our life look like compared to this? Is our life in harmony? That means everything that we think, everything that our heart that is in our heart, everything that we say, everything that we do should be in harmony with the word of Christ that God has given us. If, if people read the Bible and looked at us and then said, well, that's not how the Bible describes Jesus Christ, well, then we're not, much, the, the, we're not the Christian we ought to be. But they're, they're to look at us, they're, they're to read the Bible, look at us and say, man, that's, that's exactly, what, it, that's exactly what, what Jesus said. That's exactly what Jesus did. That's how he lived. And, and Paul was commending them in the obvious demonstration that they had corrected a lot of the problems that he had written to the, about them to in previous months. That he said that they did meet that standard. Uh, now, if people read the Bible and looked at me and they looked at you, what comparison are they going to make? W would we look like some corrupted translation? Or would they see Christ? Would they see the Scriptures perverted? Or would they see a pure child of God, a son of God? The church is commended. Their manifest declared them to be the letter of Christ, the life of Christ. Uh, the, the life was, their, their life was Christ's life as they had been taught when Paul ministered and served there. And Paul makes a reference. He says this, not in tables of stone, but in flesh and tables of the heart. And this is where he already begins to make a reference back to the old covenant, uh, which he's going to continue to elaborate on as he moves forward in the rest of the chapter. He said that their life was not in tables of stone. That's a reference to the two tables of stone um, that containing the Ten Commandments that Moses brought down from the mount, brought them down twice, brought them down the first time and broke them and then had to go back up and get them again, written with the finger of God in stone and uh, an unchanging God. When God writes his law, he doesn't change. You know, God didn't, when, when, God, when Moses had to go back up and God had to write the, the, the tables the second time, God had to write with, with, with the finger of God in the sign of the mountain for the second time. You know what they broke? They wrote the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's what they were doing at the base of the mountain. God didn't look at the people and after he judged them and say, well, I guess they're not going to do that. I should make a new set of rules that they'll comply with. But that's what we want today. But when, when God writes it, he doesn't change it. He doesn't change it for me. He doesn't change it for you. He didn't change it for his children in the, in the wilderness. He doesn't change it for his children today. And he expects us to live by the letter not of the law, because that was the old covenant, but by the letter of the life of Christ in the new covenant, written by the Spirit of God in our heart. You know, when, when you live by the law, you, you died under it, but the Spirit of Christ 
when you live by the life of Christ, it brings you into eternal life and brings you his life. And, you know, it's, we need to be reminded that we're ambassadors for Christ. In fact, he's going to deal with that. That's exactly what he says in chapter 5. And, and we don't represent ourselves. We represent the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't represent our interests and our desires and what we think. It doesn't matter what we think. It matters what the one we represent thinks. It doesn't matter what we, uh, what we want to do, what our appetites are. His is what we represent another. Look. Look, we, we judge uh, the, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker based on, you know, we judge the baker by, uh, by, by his bread, if it's good or not. We judge the, the butcher by, uh, by the quality of his meat. If it, and if he sells you spoiled meat or rotten meat or, or if he, uh, you know, cheats you in some way with it. Uh, it we, we, we judge a, a home builder by the quality of construction. We judge a, a judge by their... Uh, integrity and fairness and sense of justice. We judge an artist uh, by their, their painting and a musician by uh, what, the music they write or what we hear them play. Uh, but the world judges Christ based on what they see in his church. And every Christian is to live a life that's an open book for Jesus Christ. Listen, your life is not a private diary. We're not supposed to shut ourselves in. We're not supposed to shut ourselves out. We are to live in such a way that when the world looks at us, they see everything they expect to see in Jesus Christ. And isn't it amazing how people that have never read a Bible and never attended a church service, they have an expectation of a sinless and a righteous God. And I understand we're never going to be sinless, but they ought to see a holy and a righteous people that are a reflection of the God that has saved them and the one that they profess to love and serve. It's, and when Paul says ye in verses 2 and 3, he's, not, he, he's speaking about the church as a whole, not just individuals. Now, individuals are part of the church, but the point I'm making here, and I believe the point that Paul was making, is that people tend to judge Christianity based on the poor testimony of one individual. You know, I know that person, they go to church, and, and they're a hypocrite, and they do this, and they do that. But that's not the testimony of the church as a whole. But I'm just going to be honest with you. In fact, I, I, I wish I could remember the situation because in recent weeks, I don't think it was me, I believe it was my wife, was talking to somebody and they say, now does so-and-so go to your church? And we're like, yes, they do. We really didn't want to admit to it, to be quite frank. And to be fair, it was somebody that's a, a, um, uh, that's a, a young Christian in the Lord and just beginning to grow, but... Then they said, but does so-and-so go to your church? We're like, yes, they do. Look, when somebody asks, does so-and-so go to your church? Do, do we have to apologize and make excuses? Or are we an example of Christ? Look, even, you can, no church is not going to have a Judas Iscariot, even a Simon Peter that's in that hard head stage. But there ought to be this overwhelming testimony that, that, man, that church has a good reputation. The people there are good people. The people there care about people. The people there, are, uh, they're real and they're sincere. And, and look, even if they don't, look, we're always going to have individual enemies uh, that are, that are going to defame and, and, and insult and, and, and say slanderous things. But not just what does an individual think, not what is the reputation of one person in the church, but there, our church as a whole has a reputation in this community as a whole. And it, it ought to have that good name. And as far as I'm aware, it, it has. And if there's a righteous, if the church is righteous, there'll be a righteous testimony. And Paul, look, he said, and such trust have we through Christ to Godward. He said, our trust, he said, it's not really in you. It's through Christ towards God what he's done in your life. Look at verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. You know, if you, and he was writing to Corinth because they had, they had a good name. They had a good reputation. They, they, had, they had fixed things and, 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 they, had a, and they, were, uh, they, they represented Christ well as they should be doing. But Paul was just very careful and very quick. Look, we're not trusting in the church. Our trust is in Christ, and the glory doesn't belong to the church, 
the glory belongs to Christ. If the world looks at us and sees Christ, it's not because of our strength. It's because of his sufficiency. You know, in the Old Testament, the Jewish people knew Jehovah by several different names. And one of those was El Shaddai, which meant the all-sufficient God. Sufficient for every need. And the believer, the desire of the church is not that the world will think well of us individually or even corporately as a church, but that they think well of Christ because of what they see here. And that they'll see his strength and his care in our lives because, of, 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 because of our lives match the life that... Look, again, hold your life up in the mirror, in the reflection. In fact, that's exactly... I, I, I'll say this and I'll, I'll be done. There's almost a pause, a parenthesis here from verse number 6 down to verse number 16. If you was to read from verse 5 and then pick up in verse 17, you could almost read that as one statement where he goes on where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. And, and, uh, and then he says in, in that next verse, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, not the church. Of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The, the glorious thing is that the Spirit of God changes our image into we are a reflection. Yeah, the moon reflects the light of the sun. We are not the sun, we're not, we're not Christ. But when the world looks at us, they ought to see the reflection, just like the, the light of the moon, uh, just like the moon reflects the light of the sun. We're to be a reflection of the light of Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message tonight. We pray that it's been, uh, Lord, an encouragement to your people, a good reminder to us of the importance of, of our testimony. Father, it takes years to build a good testimony and can be destroyed in just moments. Lord, may we keep it out of a treasure, keep our heart with all diligence, and Lord, protect it and preserve it. Lord, we pray that individually and as a church body that uh, that, Lord, we would keep that good name, Lord, to bring glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, until he comes. We ask your blessing on the invitation in Jesus' name. Let's stand together. You're in a house of prayer tonight. The piano begins to play. The Lord's spoken to your heart somewhere along the way. Why don't you respond to him? Maybe tonight you're just, you, you have some personal prayer request that you need to bring personally before the Lord on bended knee. This is your time to do so.